Red Shark IBC 2025 coverage is sponsored by... Hi, Matt from Red Shark here. I'm at the Asus Pro Art stand at IBC 2025. There's a lot to see here, and I'm gonna take you on a tour of the booth. Where should I start? Um, again, there's a lot to see. What are people looking at? They're looking at this, right? So many people coming here to see this. This is the PQ09 display, which is a, a micro LED 162 inch display. Now, this, the, the really key thing about this, amongst many other things, why people really, really like it when they see it, is the pixel pitch. Now you get lots of really great big displays. This has got a pixel pitch of 0.93 per millimeter. So you can actually use this as a virtual, uh, virtual production display. So lots of interest around this. Um, and you can look, you can power it using a laptop or you can power it using one of these. Now here is quite possibly the most powerful PC at IBC 2025. Yeah. It's a, a Renderbox Nano Pro powered by Asus. And as you can see from the top, you can see why it's so powerful. It's got four Asus GeForce RTX 5090 GPUs. Render boxes are unique in that they build their systems out from the, from the graphics cards outwards. Um, incredible uh, cooling inside, really quiet, which is surprising for a unit this powerful. I've been told you can scale this up to 16 GPUs if you want. Look, if 45090s isn't powerful enough and you want that extra capacity, go ahead and do it. But, the guy that um, owns Renderbox is Richard Rogers, who's very keen to kind of push the fact that all of his solutions are built around Asus motherboards, this one included. Now, if you follow me here, you can see the other Asus motherboards. We've got the um, Z890 Creator Wi-Fi motherboard here and the X870E Creator motherboard here, which is an AMD solution. Um, lots of people are talking about graphics cards, of course. Um, this year has been a really, really big year on that front with the NVIDIA 50 series being released. Asus, this has just been shipping for the last few weeks. The, the RTX 5080 Pro graphics card. We're starting to see that now in solutions that we, we've seen out in the field. And this is configured for people like you guys, people that work with video and creative field. So it's really, really interesting. Now, speaking of people that work in creative video that want solutions made for them, I'm going to talk to you about something I didn't think I'd be talking to you about at IBC. That's Wi-Fi routers. Why are you talking about Wi-Fi routers, Matt? That's strange. Wow. Asus have a ProArt Wi-Fi router and switcher. This is kind of cool. What you're able to do with this, they've found a way of finding what tasks your Wi-Fi router is working on at any, at any one time. Now, if it can see you're working on a, what they deem as being a creative task, like sharing a file, um, sending, sending some footage, it will prioritize that task and deprioritize some of the more maybe mundane stuff that's happening in your house, like, I don't know, somebody watching Netflix or something like that. So it can see what you're doing, prioritize those points, a little bit like um, if you understand network splicing, so you can get priority um, access via network providers. It's a bit like that in your home or in your studio. So that's really, really cool. Uh, around here, we can start seeing some of the displays and more, I'm going to say traditional PC tower kind of solutions. This is getting a lot of attention because of the wood finish on the ProArt chassis. Um, which is really, really cool. So it's the uh, ProArt PA602 wood edition. There's another wood edition, but that's in black. This is the first one that's come out in this color. So people, look, it looks really cool, right? And inside they've actually got that ProArt 5080 uh, graphics card inside as well. So lots of the um, Powered by Asus workstations um, are, are on display here. They all got one thing in common. They're powered by one of those ProArt motherboards um, to, to kind of manage power management, uh, and connectivity, which is obviously really, really key. Now, let's start having a look at some of the um, displays. This one here, and they've got it there as well. This is the PA32 UCDM. Um, we've been doing a lot of work with this monitor because we've seen how well it's received by certainly the visual effects community. It's a quantum, quantum dot OLED panel uh, with a really good thousand nit peak brightness. So it's sub $2,000. People absolutely love this display. Um, and it's QDO led, so when you see it, you go, wow, this is awesome. And Asus clearly love it so much. They've got two of them here. So we've got one here and one here. This is a monitor that got a lot of attention at NAB this year, and it's going to be shipping very, very soon. This is their 8K PA32 KCX. 4K HDR display, 1000 nit peak brightness, and it's 8K. So very important display. 
it's a price point that's a bit higher, but for those really top end projects, this is something which we know is going to be getting a lot of attention coming forward. So moving around here a bit, something I really want to show you, but it's hard because for the whole three days that I've been here and coming to the ASUS stand, there's always people stood around it. Maybe we'll get some B-roll so you can see it better in a moment, is the PA27 USD. Now, this is an absolute beast. It's not going to be shipping until next year, but this is an OLED 27-inch uh, uh, Ultra HD OLED display. Now, the big thing about this is, look, it's a 1,000 nit peak brightness. It goes up to 240 hertz uh, refresh rate, so you can work with loads of incredible uh, tools like Unreal Engine and anything else that requires that. It's probably quite good for gaming if that's what you do when you're not creating. But a key thing with that display is, and I know this is something with the Asus team have had a lot of feedback on with their monitors, is it's got 12G SDI connectivity. What does that mean? It means it's not just a monitor for you to have in your studio or at home. This is a monitor you can take in the field with you. It's actually rugged, so it's got a handle at the back. Uh, it's got a really cool hood on it. It's got stands. Uh, it's got a stand at the bottom to pop it on. So this could be, uh, you can direct, obviously, have a feed from your camera. It could be an on-set monitor or a post-production unit. It's an app. Ah, and now we can get a little bit closer and have a look at it and see the one thing I haven't mentioned yet, which is the built-in colorometer. Uh, again, this is where ASUS do listen to you guys in the industry. Um, we've got other displays where the colorometer has been situated at the top of the monitor, but they've moved it here to the bottom just to make sure it doesn't collect any dust. So this here, get lots and lots and lots of attention. Unfortunately, it's not shipped until next year, but between now and then, if you get a chance to see one of these, the PA27 USD, make sure you do, because they're pretty cool. Uh, just very quickly over here, we've got, speaking of 12G SDI enabled monitors, we've got a PA24 US. We've got one of these, we've been using it for years. This is our onset monitor we use, we travel with it. The thing is rugged, you can, you can throw it around. It's got a Visa mount on it, so you can connect it to a DIT cart, which is cool. But they've also got here three different PA16 USVs, which is a really nice 12G portable, uh, 12G SDI portable monitor. So that's the smaller display, that's little brother, that's middle brother. This is big brother over here, the new one. And the fact it's a OLED display as well really, really makes it stand out. A uh, couple more things to show you. We'll start with laptops here. So these are the, these are the ProArt laptops. These are the P16 laptops. Now, these have been out for just over a year now. They've been getting some updates. And recently, Asus teased us about a new update that's coming out now. We are very pleased to be able to show it to you. Come with me. Here we have the new P16 laptops. This one here has the 5090 uh, graphics card built into it. So you can work with massive projects on the move with this. And it's also got the Lumina Pro OLED display. So this is an OLED display with, I believe it's 1600 nit peak brightness on an OLED display, which is touchscreen. So this is an incredible piece of equipment. Um, the, the, the form factor is really rugged and portable. It's got, um, it, it's actually waterproof. It's tested to US military standards. Um, and we, we, we did a project with one of these uh, at a school in New York, NYU University. And one of the students was working with Unreal Engine on the bus on the way back to where, where she lives in New York. So, but this is new. Nobody's seen this before. The new um, Lumina Pro OLED display is very, very, very impressive. And the spec on this is incredible. I'm going to read some stuff out because there's quite a lot to remember of this, but it's got the AMD Ryzen AI9 HX37 370 processor with 50 AI touch processing power because they're seeing these laptops as AI machines. So if you want to integrate AI tools into your workflow on the go, these machines can handle that. So AI, big topic here. Everyone's talking about it. Here are the Asus mini PCs and Nook, so the small form factor solutions. Um, we see these a lot. We did a project with DNEG recently, and DNEG have hundreds of their artists around the world use Asus Nook um, uh, mini PCs as thing clients to connect in to the um, uh, to, to their head offices so they can work on really, really big pro projects anywhere in the world. But this, the new Asus Ascent GX10, is their, AI, their mini AI supercomputer, complete with a Grace Black Cloud super chip delivering um, one petaflop of AI performance. So this is a lawful lot of power in a really, really small form factor. Now, have I finished? Kind of, but actually I've tried to save the best for last. Follow me. So round here, again, you know things are good when they're busy. Um, just over there, we've got the PA27JCV, 
which is very popular. It's a 5K display, which has been out for a few months now and very well received by the industry. But I really wanted to put a focus on this. This is the PA32 QCV, Red Shark Best in Show winner. Why are we giving it? It's their 6K solution. Now, it isn't. you've seen an 8K solution, which is, uh, which is fantastic and absolutely gonna be you know, very well received when that's shipping soon. But this model at a price point of 1,399 euros makes this really, really accessible. And we believe it's gonna be really popular with Mac users. So if you've got Mac Studio, Mac Mini, and you wanna have a really good 6K professional display with great color size, accuracy, really good peak brightness uh, for a proper HDR experience, we believe this is the solution for you at an incredible price point. It's actually got in the menu settings uh, menu settings built purely for Mac users. So P3 M log settings, so you can configure it to get the best performance from your Mac hardware onto your Asus display. Um, to calibrate it, Asus have just launched and it's now shipping here. You can get one of these Kali control units. It's a three in one colorometer. So it's got a Pro, Asus ProArt OSD control, which is the Asus software. It's an integrated colorometer and it's got Asus dial support, which I didn't mention with the laptops, I probably should have done. They have it on a lot of their hardware, these dials, which are for frame accurate scrubbing. They originally developed it with Adobe and it's really, really popular. On their, on their laptops, you can see it built in here. Um, so that's again, something really intuitive for, for creators that are working. So um, yeah, I think that's it. There's a lot of information there. Um, I was try gonna try and do that in two minutes. I think I've overrun. Um, but look, it's been really good showing you around the Asus Pro Art stand. Um, any questions, put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. Cheers.